Okay, so here is the walkthrough on how to make Husky problems. The model is actually inspired by a. Stop. Okay, there we go. It's actually inspired by a lovely lady who I will not mention her name here for the sake of privacy. But anyway, she has a husky and. as in a dog. Not a husky voice. I. That's, that would be weird, but moving on. Um, so that's what this is inspired by. So, here is the crease pattern with just mountains and valleys. These diagonals are going to be folded in both directions. Here, and these, all across here, and over here. These diagonals will be mountains, these are valleys, these are mountains, these are valleys, and these are mountains, and here. And these are going to be folded both directions, as well as through here, on this side, and along the bottom. And then these smaller ones will be mountains. So, the center line if you're looking at the model from the front, center line will be a valley, and then one on each side will be a mountain. It's a 64 division all the way across, and 64 this way as well. So, here it is with the grid. So, if you want to count each unit, uh, this might make it a little bit easier. Here are just the diagonals. And some, uh, one thing to, to note, there is a minor discrepancy here. On this, all these small diagonal creases are consistent all the way across. But over here, it actually stops and goes into these larger diagonals on the bottom, uh, the bottom side of this, of this line which will be a mountain fold. Well, stop. Don't do that. And the reason for that is this section is where the body of the dog actually becomes twice as high as the um, as the legs. And that was to make it a little more realistic. So, when you fold this, do this first ignore these um, sections where it's twice the distances as these just fold 60 fourths all the way across and changed again here we go so fold 60 fourths all the way across and then put in these creases right here so these will be consistent and then um, I'll let you know where to change to this pattern. And that's just a, a matter of popping out some creases here and there. So, there are the diagonals. There are the diagonals with the grid, uh, so you can count how many units each one is. And here is the breakdown. So, this series of diagonals will make the head and the hair. This series of diagonals will make the fingers, as well as all these mountain and valley folds. And, whoa, stop. Okay. And this diagonal makes the length of the arm. This series of boxes, or excuse me, this, this box here and here creates the chin. So you'll end up with, if this is the front of the model, you'll end up with a mountain fold that goes all the way across and then a valley fold right underneath it. And then the same thing works for the, uh, the breast. You'll have a mountain fold that goes all the way across here and then a valley fold goes all the way across here. Okay, this is the bottom of the of the dress. I, 
and uh, yeah, so this is the whole transition section that connects uh, the the lady to the husky. This section makes the husky's head. This section here makes the husky's tail. The hind leg is here, and you just end up with some extra paper, and we just ignore that section for now. And same thing on this side. Four legs are right here. Okay, so let's get into how do you actually fold this monstrosity. Okay, we'll do, you'll divide the paper into 30 seconds, both directions. So let's divide it in half, then in fourths, then eighths, sixteenths, then 30 seconds. And all the creases are facing the same direction, so either all mountain or all valley. Then you'll pick whatever edge of your paper looks the worst, you'll make that the bottom. Because you don't want a bad edge um, along the side, top, or the other side of the model. So I chose this as the bottom. And my apologies, this should be rotated 180 degrees around, but oh well. So, you're going to make uh, 64th divisions in one direction all the way across the paper. So you'll end up with this accordion um, looking structure. Then you're going to put in uh, these horizontal creases. Remember you already have a 32 division going this way, 64 going this way, this 32 is going to be divided into 64ths, but only for a certain amount. We're only doing these horizontal creases in 64ths. And then you'll fold inside here, inside here, down here towards the bottom, and, oh, stop. and down here along the bottom edge. And the reason for that is that when your model is done, if you have horizontal creases all throughout here, it's going to be a little harder to fold, and you'll end up with um, a lot of blocks. It, it'll it'll look you'll have crease lines on the finished model where there shouldn't be crease lines, and it'll just make it look uh, blocky instead of uh, fluid. So. You'll put in those horizontal creases. Then, and I, I forgot to mention this, you can't really see it in this picture very well. I put in all the diagonal creases as well. So, over here there's the diagonal crease that makes the arm, and it comes back up, and stop it. And then there's the diagonal creases along here that make the hair, and then the other arm over here. I also took a pencil and marked off uh, where all my transition creases are going to go. And made the diagonals along the bottom for the husky as well. So here are the transition creases. Um, this is the bottom edge of the dress. So this is the top of the model. There's the bottom edge of the dress, so that's the first set of transition creases. Here's the second set. And that's just the other side. Oh, and uh, make sure you smile every day. It's perfectly familiar and crunchy. That, that's what smiles are. And it, it's the one in, Anyway, moving on. Apple jacks. Those are good, too. This guy's pretty cool. Uh, Apple Jacks are tasty, and this guy is weird as heck. Uh, just take a look at him on the back of cereal boxes or something. He looks creepy. I don't know why they advertise that stuff to kids, but anyway, moving on. So that's the bottom of the dress down there. We have a transition crease down here uh, below the edge of the screen. Oh, stop. And then 
the third set of transition creases and the fourth set. And those are easier seen here. Bottom edge of the dress, one, two, and three. And those are here. So here's the bottom edge of the dress. Here's the first set, the second set, then third set. These ones you see here are these right there. Okay. So here I have partially unfolded. Oops. I've partially unfolded this section and then started popping out those diagonal creases that I made earlier. So you can see here's the arm, here's the longest uh, longest part of the hair, then the rest of the layers of hair, that's the top of the head, and the other arm. Now there are two units, two boxes that should be here and here, but I haven't put those in yet because I want to solidify all these creases as well as the diagonals before I start messing with these because this is what's going to make it uh, really three-dimensional and it's very difficult to work with when, you're, when you try to do it all at once. So solidify all these creases first, collapse everything down like an accordion, and then put in that, uh, that valley fold that runs from the point of each of these boxes and the mountain fold that runs from the bottom of these boxes. So that's a bad picture. That one's a bad picture too, but it's a little better. It's just a detail of the hair and the head. And if you look at the crease pattern, you can see where those come from here. Alrighty. So here is this is the back of the model again. This is also the back of the model. Here are those boxes that I left out earlier. I've already collapsed everything down and solidified these creases as well as put in these um, I don't know what to call them. There, there are mountain folds, and it's a series of mountain folds and valley folds that from one side of the model or the other is going to look like either a mountain or a valley, but it actually alternates. Um, I'll give you another picture. Yep, th that's another view from the back side. And here's the front. So, right across here, what I was saying earlier, this is going to be a mountain fold once it's all collapsed but right now it just looks like it goes mountain valley mountain valley mountain valley once we collapse it down it'll look like a single mountain fold that goes right here and then a single valley fold right below it so here's the chin starting to uh, be formed by these two boxes over here There it is. So there's that single mountain fold I was talking about. Yeah, it really is made up of both mountain and valleys, but when you're looking at it like this, it looks like a mountain. And the chin again. Okay, so it's pretty well collapsed now. I'm holding this transition section in place with closed pins because otherwise it it hasn't been wet folded yet so it wants to spring back and then back here I'm holding the dress in place with uh, just a little clip here I'm making a modification to the position of these transition creases don't worry about that I already corrected it in the crease pattern so if you're folding through you can ignore this picture and just move on that one too Okay, so this section right here will make the dog, or the husky, and this is the front view. So now the center line is a valley fold, 
and one on each side of it are both 